Hello, everyone. Today we will learn a new lecture, STP principles and configuration. STP means Spanning Tree Protocol, which is the protocol used to solve the infinite loop problem in layer two network. And today, we will first give the overview of the STP. We will introduce the motivation of STP and also the working mechanism of STP. So first, let's look at one important problem in layer two switching network, which is the redundancy and loops problem. So look at this network as an example. In a typical uh, network, the computers or hosts are connected through the access switch until the aggregation switch and finally to the internet. Here, if the aggregation switch has some failure, actually all the downstreaming hosts will be disconnected because there is only one aggregation switch. There is no redundancy here. And similarly for this access link, actually also have this problem. So if this link is failed, the downstream PC is all connected. So to solve these problems, actually people think of to add some redundancy into this network. So maybe we can add one more aggregation switch and one more uh, aggregation link. So this is the solution for that problem. So we can add one more aggregation switch and one more access link so that if one has failure, the other one can still work. But however, uh, at this network, there will be one problem. You see that there is a loop constructed in this network, but such a layer two loop will cause severe infinite forwarding problems. And another a problem for this loop, layer two loop problem is caused by the human error. For example, if there are only three links, there is no error if everything works well. However, if there is a network administrator who wrongly connect these two switches together, then there is a layer two loop happened. This is not what we want. This is caused by the human error. Similarly, for this case, there are one link between switch one and switch two, and maybe there are another backup link. However, the administrator should aggregate these two physical links together to become a logical link or aggregation link. However, if the network administrator forgot to do that or wrongly do that, then here a loop comes again, and on this uh, layer two loop, there will be a lot of more problems. So what problems will happen for such a loop event? Actually, one issue bring by this layer two loop is the broadcasting storm. So think of that if we have a packet, if this packet is a broadcast packet or it is a unknown unicast packet, means uh, although it's a unicast, but the switch doesn't know through which interface it should forward to. And also maybe this packet is a, a multicast frame. At these scenarios, actually a switch should forward the packet from all outgoing interfaces. We call it flooding. And the switch three will flood packet one to all the outgoing in interface. And similarly, switch one will also flood this packet from the outgoing. And also uh, switch two will forward it from here. And then when the switch one receives the switch two's packet uh, of this one, then it will still send out through the outgoing links. Then you see that there will be a loop, uh, infinite packet forwarding happened. Always transmit here, transmit here, transmit here, and then again transmit here. So we'll call this from one packet becomes um, much more packets broadcasting. It, we call this problem as the broadcast storm. And this will dramatically reduce the packet, the network performance, because they wasted a lot of resource on the network, both the links and switch. 
And another severe problem caused by this layer two loop is called MAC address flapping. So the idea is like this. At time slot one, when switch one receives this packet, they will think that for the, this destination, they will send out through this interface one. So they add the MAC address entry, this MAC address corresponding this interface into the MAC address table. And at time slot two, maybe it receives this packet from this path. So they think that, okay, for this packet, I should forward through interface two. And next time, interface one again, next time, interface two again. So you can see that if we look at the MAC address table, the table will always be rewritten from interface one to two to one to two again and again. So this is actually called MAC address flapping. There is a flapping in the MAC address table, and this will cause also severe uh, network resource waste. So you can see that this one should always to rewrite. So the resource of this switch is wasted. And also when it forward the packet, it doesn't know whether it should send from interface one or interface two. So these two problems are key problems caused by this layer two loops. So to fundamentally solve this problem, we should prevent, we should eliminate the layer two loops in the network. So we propose a new protocol, which is the spanning tree protocol. The idea of this spanning tree protocol is like this. Although here we have a loop, however, we can send some message to detect the topology. And if we find that in the topology there is a loop, then we should block certain part to block the link. Then the loop can be eliminated. Then the layer two loop problem can be solved and the infinite forwarding problem can be solved. Meanwhile, we also want the redundancy can be maintained. Okay, so that is the idea of STP. So how does STP uh, mirror the topology of the network? Actually, they use a special small packet, which we call the STP, Spanning Tree Protocol BPDU. B is for bridge, so bridge also means the switch, okay? So bridge packet data unit. So they send out this small packet to put the information of the link cost and the switch part in it and to exchange between neighboring switches. And finally, they can construct the network topology to calculate a loop-free topology and find the spanning tree of this network. And actually, this spanning tree protocol have one good characteristic, which is that they can dynamically respond to the network topology change. So think of that. Why do we need have two switches and two links? Because we need to, we want to add the redundancy. If there is a link fault, for example, if this uh, link fails, and then we want to switch to this link uh, quickly, then can this spanning tree protocol do this? Actually, the answer is yes. Actually, the spanning tree always continuously monitors the network topology. When the network topology changed, they can detect the change and automatically adjust the network topology. They can automatically restore this blocked part and then recover this link transmission to work as a backup link of this link. So the network becomes connected and the data can be successfully transmitted again. So by doing this, actually you can see that the spanning tree protocol can solve the layer two loop problem and meanwhile provide a solution of the network redundancy. Yeah, okay, so that's the motivation of spanning tree protocol and its core idea. Then now we have one question. So actually we have the layer three loop and also layer two loop. So the question is, what is layer three loop and layer two loop? What's their reason and how to solve such layer two and layer three loop problems? Okay, so let's think of this problem. First, for layer three loop, we can see that that is a loop on routers, on layer three devices. So this we call the layer three loop. And the main 
reason, the main cause of this layer three loop actually is the routing loop. So maybe, for example, if we use the dynamic routing protocol, actually they can calculate the routings correctly. So there is no loop. They have the loop prevention capability. However, if the routing is manually configured by human being, then maybe there are some error or fault. Then there may happen such a layer three loop. And to solve this layer three loop, actually, can you remember that we add a domain in the IP packet header? And this domain called TTL, time to live. This is the maximum hops a packet can transmit over a network. After one hop, the TTL reduced by one. And if the TTL equals to zero, the packet will be discarded. So at most, they can transmit for TTL number of hops. It will not cause infinite packet forwarding. Okay, so that is the idea for layer three loop and how to solve the layer three loop problem. Now let's look at what is layer two loop. So actually layer two loop is the loop uh, on two or more switches, layer two devices. And that is because the layer two switch needs to have the redundancy. And also sometimes the cables are incorrectly connected or the links are incorrectly configured. And the main, actually, we need such protocol or mechanism to prevent the layer two loop because layer two loop caused a lot of severe broadcasting, broadcasting flooding, broadcasting storm problem. However, we cannot add any special domain in the layer two frame header. We need some protocols. So the protocol we used to solve this layer two loop problem actually is the spanning tree protocol, right? So we can find the loop and construct a tree and block the unnecessary parts so that to disable the links. So finally, the loops can be eliminated. Okay, so this is a application scenario of spanning tree protocol. If we take the campus network, for example, actually in the campus network, there are a lot of computers uh, connected to the access switch and then to the aggregation switch and then to the switch and routers and then firewall and um, to the internet. So where does this spanning tree protocol works on? Actually, it works on this layer two network between the aggregation switch and the access switch. For the upper layer, for the layer three networks, actually they use the uh, TTL we just now mentioned to solve the loop problem. Okay, now let's give a quick review of the STP overview. So first, STP is used to solve the layer two loop problem. They solve this problem by running the information exchange to discover the loops and then to construct the tree and block certain parts, finally to eliminate the loops. Also, you need to know that when we run the HTTP, actually it continuously monitor the network status. When the network topology change, the STP can detect the change and automatically respond to the change. So actually STP can prevent the loop problem and meanwhile they can ensure the network reliability.